market analysis and I have joining me Patrick Mumo from Genghis Capital Investment Bank who's going to be talking to us about the numbers that we have here this week. Welcome Patrick. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Well let's get started with the NSE uh, All Share Index which has from last Thursday gone down by 1.96%. What are your thoughts on that? Um, the decline in the All Share Index has been driven primarily by large cap stocks. Um, primarily the top three have been Safaricom, KCB and equity, and this is largely due to um, foreigners continuing to exit the market. Yeah, they have been uh, foreigners have been sellers for the 12th consecutive session. Okay. Uh, like you said, we've been seeing that going on. But uh, let's move on now to the top movers. We've got uh, Kennel Cobble Limited. It's uh, you know at the top there with the volume being 27 million 888,600. Uh, what do you think is happening within the oil? Okay, what's primarily driving this is not necessarily something but um, within the farm, in all Cobil, uh, we find there's been st um, uh, stories this week uh, regarding a uh, dilution of shares from uh, um, through the ESOP. Um, one of um, uh, the employees, the CEO, uh, if, if I was um, quite blunt, the CEO um, is going to get an additional 79 yes. million shares, and this is going to dilute the existing shareholders by around 5%. So it was prime to see some movement in the share price by 5% downwards, and this happened um, the day it was announced, it, but it retreated um, further than that. So it was a, quite a market correction. Um, uh, since then, there's been a market correction. We have seen the prices as a market adjustment that shift from the overall market. Okay. And our second mover at the top is Safaricom Limited there with uh, 12,332,700. Now, Safaricom, of course, uh, this week did say that they have got their new tariffs out. We're increasing by 30 cents as the bundles as well as calls, 10 cents for text. Do you think that's going to affect them in the coming week now as uh, far as this is concerned? Um, it's unlikely to affect them because you find these costs are being loaded onto the customer. So it's the consumer who's going to bear the uh, brunt of these additional yes. costs. And it's across. So you find the share price will be largely unchanged um, which they are coming to affect currently. That's that they did that with the Finance Act 2018, yeah. as we've seen. Now, let's move to our top gainers there. Mumia's Sugar is uh, the first one there with 36.36% yeah. increase. What do you have to say about those numbers? Um, this is primarily driven by speculation. If you look at Mumia's, they have seized operations. Um, they're heavily in debt, owing government uh, upwards of Kenya shillings, $3 billion, with other creditors around um, over half a billion. And um, currently, they are seeking a bailout from government to what the tune of around Kenya shillings, $2 billion. Yes. And investors are speculating that they'll get this um, this funding, and that's why we are seeing the share price move up. Okay, uh, so there it is. The sugar sector, of course, is definitely one with many conversations right now. But as for the top losers, it's very interesting. I'm seeing Britain Holdings; they're going down 14.04 percent. However, last week it was one of our gainers with about 8.80 percent. So, what could have caused the situation in the week? For Britain, primarily driven by the issue. Um, you find there are two sides to this. Um, when a bond is retiring, it depends on how investors um, react. They might react in a good way or a bad way. Good way if they think that the company is retiring, its debt will be um, less likely um, will be deleveraging. Or in a bad way if it thinks that, if investors think that um, the cash flow available after retirement of early debt will not be enough um, to sustain operations um, well over the course of the um, coming year or short term, um, to fund short term liabilities rather. So you find investors are reacting to that um, quite mixed last week it was positive, this week negative, but we believe that's due to the cash flow issues. Okay, yeah. so as you said, that uh, bond thing has the two-sided story to it. Yeah. All right, well, uh, let's look at the National Bank of Kenya. They're going down 12.50%. So the decline here is largely attributable again to dilution. Uh, you find their, um, their plans to um, float a rights issue in the coming um, future. On top of that, there's the differentials hold a huge of, um, uh, ownership in, at National Bank. And this is also being um, assessed for conversion into um, ordinary shares. And this will have the effect now of uh, both these activities, the rights issue and the preference shares, will have the adverse effect of um, diluting the existing shareholders. So you find the uh, price is coming off to reflect that um, eventuality. 
Okay, and finally, Uchumi Supermarket, once again, one of the top losers going down 12.50%. Just last week, we were talking about, uh, you know, with the state of Uchumi and them hoping for that government bailout that is unlikely, it's definitely been a rocky kind of a situation with them. Yes, um, it has been, and their case is almost similar to what um, also Mumias is experiencing. Yes. I'm looking for bailout, but in the past, they have also had bailout Uchumi, and they have failed to deliver from that or failed to pick up from that. Um, they the decline in the share price is largely attributable to um, existing um, creditors this week coming out, additional five um, creditors coming out and um, joining the um, uh, lawsuit to um, recover money on um, what the tune of around 0.5 billion um, from Uchumi. And given that they don't have financing to give this, um, investors are beginning to speculate that the things might be a bit troubled, although it's putting Uchumi in a very precarious Okay. Thank you very much, Patrick shedding some light on the markets that we have seen this week for now let's take a look at markets 101 for the question on the street, something that you're wondering about, maybe the question that somebody has asked today. Let's find out what it is. My name is Eric Masawa. I would like to ask the company to have to invest the capital markets. Thank you for the question. There is no minimum amount required to invest um, at the NSC or in the capital You have to factor in um, additional such as commission, the trade, and levies are imposed by NSC. Thank you very much, Patrick, for clarifying that for us. And now it's time for the NSC Historical Facts. <laughs> 